Hi, I'm Tony Howell and I want to welcome you. If you are an artist who are looking to share your message to larger audiences and have more impact, today's interview is for you. Sierra Bogus is one of the world's most beloved leading ladies. She's perhaps most known for her splashy Broadway debut as Ariel in Disney's The Little Mermaid, as well as reinventing the role of Christine Daae in The Phantom of the Opera, and originating the role of Christine Daae in Love Never Dies, where she received her first Olivier nomination. In addition to her theatrical work, Sierra's concert performances and her live solo album have introduced her to international success. Beyond world-class talents, it's her universal message that you are enough that continues to grow her personal legacy and impact. I was honored to build her online home, SierraBogus.com, and it is my honor today to join her in her New York City home. Sierra! Yay! Thank you for having us! Tony, I'm so excited! This is very exciting. This is exciting! So I want to dive in and ask you, I always start my process with purpose, the why. Why musical theater for you? Well, I get asked this question a lot and I don't have one of those cool stories where it's like, I saw Annie when I was six <laughs> and I just wanted to be the dog. No, um, I, I was an ice skater for 10 years and that's what I wanted to do with my life when I was younger and because I was from Denver, Colorado, so I didn't know what Broadway was, but I knew, I think from ice skating that I loved performing and being in front of people. So strangely from that transition, because the problem was that sport is very expensive and it became so expensive for my family that I couldn't do it anymore. And so I was 13 or 14 years old and it broke my heart and somehow I landed into musical theater. So that became then my outlet, which I I guess I do kind of love that story because I think my soul was always my soul's purpose was always talking to me, but it was it so it was going through a different maybe channel or something. Does Absolutely. that make sense? Yeah, there's yeah. there's a start with why talk about starting with the why and then the yeah. what just evolves. Totally. So. Yes. I love that. So you've done some pretty incredible things. I guess so. <laughs> um, I want to know, what are you in your life most proud of? If I asked my college self that, it would be like um, being on Broadway or being in the West and like things that I guess I thought about that th those were the things that I would be proud of. And I am. But I think now being more of a uh, I guess reflecting back and also knowing that there's more to life than just the one thing that I'm doing for a living, I'm the most proud of uh, surviving <laughs> <laughs> on all levels, personal and professional. And um, I'm really proud of myself that I that it's important to me to keep wanting to be better than I was even five minutes ago. I guess that that truly is what I'm proud of as opposed to just my resume mm -hmm. which is I think worth being proud of for us when we have accomplished things it's it's looking at that and going good job me but I think it's also understanding that the larger picture too and just taking gratitude for a second that's like you've survived this long what's that quote that's like um, you've congratulations! You've survived a hundred percent of your worst days. <laughs> I don't know that one. But yeah, we'll have to find but, it. But yeah, that. I love it. So mm -hmm. you mentioned gratitude. Um, mm -hmm. Would you say that surviving is what you're most grateful for? Or can you articulate, sort of? I re I love Brene Brown. She is the best. I think, um, and. She, I was reading something of hers recently and it was reminding me that she said that people who live a wholehearted life have a gratitude practice. It's not just an attitude of gratitude. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we get caught up in that. Just, just be grateful, just be grateful. But what are we actually saying? And so I stopped and marinated on that a bit and I realized I want to take my gratitude practice to the next level. So what I do daily, I have a timer set on my phone or a reminder, you know, mm -hmm. the reminder app, mm -hmm. if those of us that have iPhones, um, <laughs> there's a reminder app. And I have it set that goes off at 3.30 each day. 
So if you see me around 3.30, you can ask me what I'm going to for. Ding, ding. Um, <laughs> everyone, every day, now I'm going to get <laughs> social media. What are you grateful for, Sierra? Um, <laughs> but I will stop. I will get that reminder. Um, and I will stop myself and just within my head or depending on who I'm around. Sometimes I'm teaching master class and I will stop the class and be like, okay, hey, we're going around. And I will list things that I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. Strangely, the one that keeps coming up consistently are my cats. Aww. I keep... I hope they make an appearance. Oh, please. It, if I had treats, they will. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So you and I both surveyed our audiences about mm. what they want to know. And as I looked over the questions, there's a lot that has to do with change and fear. So yes. some of the examples were choosing a major, moving to New York City, and then for the uh, you know the professional adult population, you know leaving certain jobs, changing jobs, accepting certain offers. Yep. So how are you personally handling change and fear? Well. It is that saying that the only thing constant is change. And so it's really understanding that this is not something that's going away. It's fine because I think we dip a lot because things start feeling consistent, feeling consistent. And then we forget that something is going to shift and that's when fear sets in. Mm -hmm. So um, I think doing a gratitude practice is a really important thing. Uh, I think it was Tony Robbins or somebody who said that you can't be in uh, gratitude and fear at the same time. And so I, it is always going back to gratitude, truly. Um, that's helpful in terms of dealing with fear. It's also knowing that you have to figure out how to dance with it, as opposed to going, this doesn't exist, um, this isn't happening. Uh, I like this analogy that I feel like I came up, I don't know why it's a battlefield analogy, because I don't even, I'm, I don't know, but it is, it's like, I feel like there's a few types of people that if you're on a battlefield and the people who are pretending like bullets are flying, but it's like you're pretending like there's no bullets flying. And so you're just like, Wee! that's one type. That is as much to me a disorder as a being just in full depression. You know, that is these, it's a disorder to be like, everything is positive and fine all the time, which is also something I get asked a lot. How do you say positive all the time? That's not a thing mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. or happy all the time. Um, and then there's the people that are just terrified. So they're say on a battlefield, just terrified. So I'm just going to hide. Um, and it's too much. It's too much. And then the people that are, you know, navigating. navigating. And so I don't know why I love that. And I just think of, of that analogy and I figure out how to navigate the fear. Um, a lot of times when I teach, uh, kids who want to do this for a living, um, they ask me about fear and I say it's just a simple change of um, thought in your head that instead of going, I have these butterflies, I'm so terrified, these butterflies, it's going, I have these butterflies because I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. It's the exact same butterflies. It's just the, the word that you put onto it. Mm -hmm. um, that that's helpful to me that there are times where, I'll, where i will check myself of um what am i actually afraid of and uh and this goes for also for what people are asking choosing a major or moving a new city or all this stuff ask yourself what it is that you're afraid of because it's something like 90% of our fears never actually come true. Mm -hmm. And uh, so our heads, knowing that it's just our minds, our ego mind, Miriam Williamson says the ego speaks first and the ego speaks loudest. And that thing is like always there to remind you that's like, you don't got this, you mm -hmm. know, keep yourself, stay down, don't, don't you dare expand. But at the same time, that ego will also be like, you better expand because or what, you know, it's just listening to the, I guess, higher consciousness. I love that. Yeah. So for the professionals watching who are, who uh, are presented with opportunities similar to yours, where there are high stakes environments, it's their big splashy leading role. It is live streaming around the world. This is preserved on an audio recording forever. Mm -hmm. How can they handle that fear or that sort of high pressure environment? What are some of your tools? First of all, it's knowing that you've done the work. If I'm really terrified and nervous and I'm feeling 
I guess what you would call anxiety, it's beca usually because I haven't done enough prep work. So really making sure that you have prepared yourself for whatever this is. It's not enough to just have been cast or to get the job. Now what are you bringing to it? So if I know that I've done my prep work, so for, I will use my, myself as an example, is that how I've eaten, how I've taken care of my body, not within the last 24 hours, within the last like, I call it our version of spring training, mm -hmm. you know, like getting yourself prepared for this. Um, uh, my mindfulness practice. So um, what am I going to be focusing on? And, you know, yoga helps with that a lot, I find. Meditation helps with that a lot because our minds are constantly talking to us. And it's Brene, again, that talked about our minds were hired for the job like billions of years ago when we first came to this planet. These mm -hmm. brains were hired for the job of letting us know when we're not safe. So that's like a saber toothed tiger is coming at you. You're not okay. So you start feeling the feelings of uh, what is fear. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing happens. That same exact fear response happens to us when we're about to do something that terrifies us. But we're safe. That's what it's, it's, it's like, just know you're safe. It's not a life and death. Like mm -hmm. the saber tooth isn't coming at you. It's just a live stream, you know? <laughs> which can feel like a saber tooth. But you know, I think it's just acknowledging that it's just a human, your body is talking to you. So that it goes back again to being grateful that I talk to people a lot that's like, um, is fear manifesting by, sh or your hand shaking? Now look at your hands and go, I'm grateful that I have hands that can shake. Mm -hmm. So you are just changing the thought and energetically uh, changing it to uh, to being grateful again that you have your body is simply yeah, yeah. your body is simply helping you it, you just have to reprogram the thought I guess I love it well I would like to tell you you have slayed the tiger successfully multiple times slayed that saber tooth um, so here's something I want to ask you too I think so often we see our, our role models and our mentors and we think that they've never dealt with the problems that we have. Mm -hmm. So can you think of a particular story that would surprise people? Something that, sometime that you've dealt with rejection or failure or disappointment? Oh, all the time. I mean, all the time. And I do, I get asked this a lot and I think we are living in a culture of people striving for perfection because we know we don't post a photo without filtering it a million times. So everything is like, oh, you're so perfect. That's what I hear all the time, to, not just to me, to other people and um, just com constantly comparing. I will talk about my 2017, that entire year for me was full of rejection. Personally, professionally, uh, sometimes it felt like spiritually. Mm -hmm. It just was a number of things. And what's funny is I, I pick a word to focus my year on. And last year, the word I chose was power. So I think what happens is the universe, source, whatever you look to goes, okay, let me give you situations where you are then powerless. And how do you deal with that? Because mm. that for me was what it was, was a year full of places where I felt powerless. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, again, you survive. <laughs> I survived. I'm here. And what I'm proud of is the work that I did while I was down. It's not the time when you're feeling that low, when you are being so rejected on all the levels. It's not the time you reach for the bottle, the, that you reach for the food, that you reach for the drug, that you reach for the cigarette, that you reach for the binge watching, you know, all of these things, these vices, the social media addiction. Um, that is not the time. And I knew that. This is not the time you do that, Sierra. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Get back in class, um, uh, go see some friends, talk this out with people, uh, get back to the mindfulness books. Where have you, where can you take responsibility? I think is what it is, um, especially in situations like that. But then it was also understanding that this is, I think that rejection and that type of uh, deep sadness happened too, to remind me for when I teach people that's like, oh, I'm still in the, I, I do, I completely understand um, where you are at. Mm -hmm. And without getting into detail, I think also is important. It's like, it's not necessarily that you need to hear my story, but it's just knowing that um, I completely know what that is and often go there too. 
I love it. Yeah. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. So a question for you, because you are so good at taking care of yourself in every way, um, can you share some of your personal, we've talked about some of them, but just highlight some of your daily routines, practices, rituals. Yes. And then here's the second part. Does that change at all if you're in a run? Yes. So uh, when I'm not doing a show, it's much easier because my time is my own. Uh, but I give myself a schedule because that is helpful for me. <laughs> and I think for a lot of people, because we go to school, most of us for at least like, say 18 years mm -hmm. or so. Um, so we are regimented. And then when we get out into the world, we're like, what? So I give myself now a schedule and I do yoga three times a week. I go to ballet three times a week. I have recently added Soul Cycle um, because I love the, uh, that's just completely different than that. And it's not as, yeah, it's just different. Um, and uh, that's, that's what I'll get to. But I, when I wake up in the morning, I try and stay in the, um, the purity. When we first wake up in the morning, it's our purest time. It's mm -hmm. our time when we're the most aligned. So uh, it, it, you try and stay in that as long as you can. So the hardest thing I think for all of us, because we're addicted to our phones, is to roll over and get your phone mm -hmm. um, and immediately start scrolling through and looking through. Consume, and consume, consuming. consume. Yes, and as soon as I do that, then um, again, Brene says your phone always tells you what, what should you be afraid of today? Um, what should you be comparing yourself to today? Like all this, and that's what you are starting to feel. We'll get there. Like I try and create a, a space for myself that is that is as big as it possibly can that just stays in the purity mm -hmm. uh, so that throughout the day, especially living in New York, we are constantly, we're being hit with all kinds of people and situations and transportation. Like, it's like the we, MTA. Uh, the, as soon as you get on that subway, <laughs> it's going to go like this. So have I filled myself up with enough purity and love, self-love and um, so try and stay in that as long as you can, like expand that time. Um, meditation is good. I tell people that you can set your timer for six minutes. That's all you have to do. And there's this mantra that uh, Marianne Williamson has, uh, that I've heard her say a number of times. And I will suggest this also for people. And it's also how I prepped for like this interview mm -hmm. um, is to say, you know, align with source and where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say and to whom? And the part that I've added on is um, what would you, and what would you have me hear and from whom? Because I think a lot of times it is, I mean, I'm talking a lot because it's, just, you know, we're asking me yeah. things, but it's also, I'm, I am making sure that I hear mm -hmm. what you are saying and, you know, we're hearing energetically from people and make sure that we're being present with that. That is helpful. And then another meditation that Wayne Dyer taught to me before sadly he passed was an I am light meditation. And it's where you close your eyes. It's very simple. And again, I'll set my timer for six minutes. I don't know why I've come up with six, but I don't know. It's your magic number. It's fine. My life path number is a nine. So maybe upside down. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> so uh, it's I am light. So you close your eyes but you look at your right eye i look at your look at your left eye m and your third eye with your intuition light i am light i am light because the idea is that we are light workers that's what we're here to do and if you choose to believe that we are just balls of energy and light and we have taken on these forms because you can't tell me that animals aren't also here to be light workers. They have, they are also balls of light, and they have taken these forms. Like you know, mm -hmm. even spiders. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so, what is your rehearsal process? You get new material, and how do you prepare yourself to lift it from the page to the stage or the screen? Uh, it's the work. Going back to the work. So, uh, I will. Um, go through, I guess, depending on what type of thing this is, you go through the character first and foremost. Where am I, where do I see myself in this? So I will, I'm very visual, so I need to write things out. I love the thing that uh, old acting teachers have said that's write down what people are saying of you and then write down what you say of yourself, meaning the character. That's really helpful. 
I remember doing that when I prepped for Fontaine and um, Les Mis because it's that especially because it is the longest running show in London. So, you know, it's been countless people. So I thought, how do I prep for this and make sure that this is mine and just getting back to the basics and not ignoring that. Um, yeah, that's really what it is. And uh, running, I'm constantly <laughs> running lines. I mean, even when I'm not in a show, if I have concert prep to do, then I'm going through what's my set list and what comes next. And I am constantly, and I walk everywhere I possibly can, partly because I want to stay in my like safe space and mm. not deal with the MTA. But, um, and when I'm walking, I will often have lyrics going through my head and just always because I, I just want to eliminate the worry of mm -hmm. have I done enough mm -hmm. and where you know we've also get in that thing of we're so busy so okay so I don't have the time to spend just sitting and working on this but you can do the work going from A to B. So you're multitasking. I'm multitasking. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, so I prepared for this interview by listening to a lot of your former interviews and one of the ones for our viewer that they need to listen to is your Mastin Kip interview. Yes. And if you like this interview, you need to also Google Sierra. I mean, we'll have these on your website, all of your interviews. But right. um, specifically with your Mastin Kip interview, you talked about success and how it may differ from fulfillment. Mm. So I want to ask you today in this conversation is how do you personally define success? Again, the way that I would have de defined success and was, I think that we're taught to define success is by what do you have? And... Wayne Dyer really shifted that for me when I saw that you are not what you have, you are not what you do, and you are not what other people think of you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wait, what? That blew my mind, especially in our industry. People, I hear this so often when people who aren't in our industry talk to us about, you know, it's they feel like it's a very selfish, self-serving thing because they are they do also think that's like because you're somebody because you've done so many things mm -hmm. i don't think that at all i think that the most successful people that i love and aspire to be like and they aren't living based off of their resume they're mm -hmm. living based off of being wholehearted and and um knowing that uh, <laughs> who they are is enough at the core but that takes a lot of work so i guess how I would define success is um, the practice, because I don't think you ever arrive at success. Amen. Amen. Yes. Okay. High good. High. Yes. Um, I don't think you do. Uh, it's the practice of um, maybe taking the layers off of things that no longer serve you, that keep you stuck in the idea of the old definition of success mm -hmm. what i don't even know what i just said <laughs> I'm like, whoa but i think that might make sense it's the practice of not getting stuck and rewired into the old definition of success and stepping into your own enoughness therefore it's success is 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 navigating change mm -hmm. without being like angry at it, I guess, or wanting to resist it, maybe. Uh -huh. But that's also fine. I think I don't want to limit anybody's emotion that they might be having around on their journey. But yeah. Cool. Cool. I love it. So you are also someone who gives so much, in addition to self-care, um, for how do people, how do you have, handle your generosity as well as your boundaries and the balance between self-care and sacrifice? I have a really good therapist. Me too, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and I have talked with him about it quite a bit um, because that's the part of this industry that I wasn't ready for is how many people come at you mm -hmm. and because you're not prepped for that you know mm -hmm. we're actually prepped for you're probably never gonna work <laughs> <It's> <laughs> pretty much um, so yeah there's a lot of uh, energies coming at me at all times and I do want to give to them and but I also need to practice self-care I'm I have to learn this and it, it's a constant practice because he will often ask me what would taking care of yourself look like and that's a very hard question for me to answer and I'm getting better at it and a lot of times it is saying no we're not taught that um, mm -hmm. but I I, th I feel like I saw a Lady Gaga interview one time where she's like 
saying no is almost like a superpower. That's like learning that we don't have to say yes to absolutely everything. And wearing that badge of, of busyness is not... Not it's serving not, anyone. It's not serving anyone. And I can't be my best self if I'm completely overwhelmed with other people's expectations. Um, some practical things that I do when I need to uh, decompress or have had maybe been overly... If, I've de- if I've depleted, depleted myself yeah. uh, is to get back to, okay, where have I sacrificed myself in order to? And a lot of times, like, so get back to yoga, get back to eating right is a big one um, because we can't get keep giving out really amazing things but putting in really toxic stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I use Palo Santo wood and sage and that's a thing that I, I have a shaman healer that I, uh, I love deal it. with in New York. She's amazing. And um, she taught me that. So I can just sage the self, sage the heart. I do that like for cast members as well. During School of Rock, I was saging Alex Brightman all the time. <laughs> um, just come in, you know, because that's a big role. And yeah. just come in drained and just let me sage you. Um, there's a lot of like Eastern culture stuff. There's like singing bowls, which the idea of that is the um, sound waves and stuff. You can feel them around you. So I have a singing bowl and sometimes I'll just, it's like bathing in that. Mm -hmm. I also love crystals and, uh, and stones and stuff from the earth. So I'll use uh, selenite there. I have a beautiful selenite wand, which connects you to your, um, just, higher uh, consciousness Um, black tourmaline which is a really wonderful stone that it's not a good definition but i call it like the trash can Mm -hmm. for all this stuff so i put it into my right hand and just let all of the that just be drawn into that um pyrite is a really good one it connects you to the earth it's for grounding Mm -hmm. um and then a rose quartz which is bringing in love so i'll often come home and just crash in my meditation room and just sit there, rose quartz, black tourmaline, selenite wand at my feet of pyrite and just, I am light. <laughs> so that's some practical stuff. Too. I love it. Well, on behalf of all of us watching in the middle of this, I want to say thank you for giving so much, um, not just today, but in, in your lifetime thus far. It is my pleasure. Oh. <laughs> okay. So for those who may be on their way to, you know, success in their terms. Um, What are some of your practical tools for saying no, for Mm -hmm. saying maybe, or what guides you to say yes? I'm working on this still. Uh, I don't know. It's listening to the gut, but also I just recently had a therapy session about it and he's like, it is good to listen to the gut, but also we have a brain and prefrontal cortex thing for a reason. So Mm -hmm. it's figuring out how to marry those two because sometimes it's like, well, my gut says, you know, especially with love Mm -hmm. and heartbreak, it's like, well, the gut told me that it's just like, yeah, do it, just go for it. And that's not necessarily the thing. So I'm working on this, but um, I do think that there is a pretty steady voice of the higher self that I'm, that I can tune into. Um, And, and also asking the question when you're being asked, um, you know, to make a decision about something. I will often ask myself, how can I serve instead of what can I get? And I will meditate six minutes on that. Mm -hmm. How can I serve? How can I serve? And this is, how can I serve myself? How can I serve the world in the best way? Um, What's the one that's going to do that? And it, it will usually become clear. And Wayne also said to me quite a bit that the answer to most things is love. So that's a hard one. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm like, really? I have to be loving to that person or situation? But it's true, Mm -hmm. unfortunately and fortunately. So sometimes the best answer is, okay, how is is this going to be the most loving? Okay, the most loving thing to do right now is say no. Mm Mm-hmm. Even though the ego of maybe the person or the situation is not going to resonate with them, but I know on my higher consciousness that the best answer is love, and so saying no or saying yes. Mm-hmm. 
Do you ever battle with self-doubt? And if so, how do you tell that girl to pipe down? All the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> I do get all the time, all the time, all the time. I need it, all the cameras. All the time I, I battle self-doubt. I all the time. Um, and what I'm learning is I don't tell her to pipe down right away because when I do that, it, ca- it creates more anxiety. Mm-hmm. It's like, stop, you know better than this. You know, it's just, and it's, it, you know, when you watch like a child who's pitching a fit and the parent maybe is super frustrated and it's like, stop, just stop. And that makes the child even more because that's all it is, is that it's that five-year-old self inside of us that's going, that's like, see me or whatever that hurt is from deep within us from when we were a tiny five-year-old or whatever, Mm -hmm. that's just coming to play. Um, I don't have to listen to it. I don't have to fully ignore it, but it's just understand. It's almost like having to be empathetic with it. It's like sit down with your self-doubt and it's like, I totally, yeah, I hear you. Totally. Like, let me just, let me hear you tell me some more reasons about why you're feeling like that. And Mm -hmm. it's like, well, because, you know, I know that I'm not good enough and don't forget the time that I did that bad thing. So why would I be rewarded or why do I deserve, you know, it's like. So she has to be heard. She has to be heard. Mm -hmm. And instead of me, higher self, taking it on and being like, you're right. We are totally. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, but there's no other word for that. Instead of that, it's being like, it's like, I totally hear that. And that is an option. Mm-hmm. Do you think maybe there's another option? Self-doubt being like, yeah, maybe there, well, would you say, now we're in conversation. Now we got it. Mm. Now we go. So it's taking that time. Now, sometimes those empathetic conversations are short because it's like, you do know better. It's like, you're right. I just wanted attention. So I, a lot of times, my lower self is just like, I just really need attention right now. It's like, okay, all right, let's play. Let's play in the mud. But I think the difference about me uh, as I get more and more grown is I'm not interested in staying in the mud very long. Mm-hmm. I don't like to play down there. But when things happen and I am down there, I recognize that there's nutrients down here. Let me learn it since I have to be down here. And... Take, take the lessons with me, mm-hmm. but I'm not staying down here. I'm not gonna stay and be like, oh, that lesson again. I better just stay here because I keep having the same. Mm-hmm. You know, That's I'm not so interested beautiful. in staying down. Took my next question. Oh, for- you, just, you just dip right out of that valley and go <laughs> right back to the top. Okay, so now let's get practical tools. Okay. What books do you love? I, there's a whole list on your website. Yes, there is that you so lovingly put together. That was like the best day when you're like, how about a shop? And I was like, yes, here's all the things. Wait, first of all, I just want to say that I did not like reading when I was young, like at all. And it wasn't until I started getting into, during Little Mermaid actually, so that's like 10 years ago is when I started getting interested in like, oh, I enjoy self-help books, like obsessed with understanding like, why I feel the way I feel or whatever. So that's like a shift in my later life that's like, oh, I love reading these things. Mm -hmm. I don't actually enjoy reading a fiction. In case anybody was interested in that. I'm the same way. Okay. (laughs) Uh, So what I love are all Brene Brown books. She wrote uh, Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, and then her most recent one, Braving the Wilderness. Those all I have read and then rising strong i'm rereading right now because it's just i feel like they should be textbooks even though they have she she's not specifically talking to artists really at all but it's i feel like should be like part of your curriculum for like a musical theater student honestly um so all Brene brown books and then wayne dyer who wrote a ton of different books but the first one of his that i was introduced to was the power of intention and there's a version of it that's like really really colorful and has like really gorgeous drawings in it and stuff and i it took me probably two years to get through it it's not really long but i just needed to stop and process Mm -hmm. um there's a lot of information in that then Um, Inspiration, which is written by Wayne Dyer, and I loved how he broke down different things you can be inspired by. That really helped shake up my whole world when I was feeling like, what am I on this planet to do if I'm not doing a Broadway show? You know, that really changed my whole, because it's like, go out into nature. 
Mm -hmm. Literally, this is happening for you, with you. Don't forget the things that are free, that don't cost anything. Get outside and go stare at some leaves and be like, oh, the wonder of this leaf who just lived an entire life of a bud to a leaf grown on a tree, changed color and then fell. Like, that's a life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm from Denver. I love it. <laughs> Hippie parents. I love it. I love it. I saw all these butterflies on my way here this morning. Oh. Which is obviously from the museum, but I was like, there's something about butterflies today. No question. And don't they represent like freedom and, and innocence? Transformation. Transformation. That's what you're doing and flying. You can fly. Yeah. So what teacher or teachers um, have really helped you? What do you, who do you return to or who do you recommend? Well, teachers that I don't know are the people I just listed and you can find, the, you know, those are my spiritual teachers. Uh, and then um, my teacher uh, from who was, she was my high school drama teacher and she taught at that school for 30 years and her name was Nancy Priest, but we called her Priest. And um, she was, she put in within me the, um, love of learning about this business as opposed to just relying on talent even. It's just like um, understanding that and the, and the um, community that she created and that we, I knew that there was a place for me in the drama club. And you hear that so often, it's like, we're a bunch of misfits, but this is where we come together. And uh, she really instilled that in me, that it's community, and so it's creating families. And that's part of my favorite thing about what I do, is I have all these family, I have like, I've realized behind me is like small families of, of different shows that I've done, of the people, like, mm -hmm. I just, that's my favorite thing. It's like lifelong that. And I think Priest uh, started that for me. Um, and then Mary Satrakian, who uh, people know, and they, a lot of people will come and study with her now. And I met her when I was 17 and just took a master class with her. And uh, she really changed my life. And um, people know. Uh, we know why. Her. It's we know up. why, but I won't say it yet, Tony. We're not going to say She's it yet. Up. Oh. So, what I want to ask you now, because I work in digital marketing and I think social media and the internet is such a dangerous place. Mm -hmm. It is truly the Wild West, uh, but you do it so well. So, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank <laughs> you. Let's hear for the viewer some of your practices, thoughts on the internet, social media, and how you handle and navigate that world, that yes. battlefield. That is a battlefield. That is a full-on battlefield. Uh, um, okay. First of all, I want it to be said that I, in 2009, deleted every single account. I couldn't handle it. Um, that was 2009. That's the place I was in. It was overwhelming, but also you know, we didn't grow up, we weren't born with social. This is, we're still navigating and learning. I had to delete everything because it was giving me full panic, anxiety. It felt like everyone can access me. I didn't have a handle on it. I had no clue. It was, it had a handle on me. So once I uh, chose to get back on, it was because I had done enough self work that I was like, wait, I have a platform. Instead of going, what can I get? It's how can I serve? So um, I love, I have always been somebody who loves to share photos. Mm -hmm. Like my fa like photo albums from when we're kids. I have, and obviously like <laughs> these are important to me. Um, so like Instagram was a really Your awesome place. one for me. Um, but Twitter, Twitter was actually the first one I went back on because that was when you could just do, was it 140 characters? Mm -hmm. Now they've changed it. But for all that time, I was like, oh, I can get my message out like what is one snippet and it's while I was reading um, I, like books by Wayne and stuff that's like oh I want, this is really affecting me I want to make sure other people hear this too and I listened to something that Deepak Chopra said which he really celebrated social media because he's like we can get the message out to millions of people in one tweet boop power done as opposed to it's gonna take much longer, you know, cause we don't have this World Wide Web, but now we can. So because we know this, I think we get to decide then how you wanna do it. Um, you know, I 
so I'm in control. I don't like other people to do my social for me. I'm very much, this has to be me. This has to be Raw Sierra. And um, that's how I navigate it, is uh, how can I serve? Mm -hmm. And that's, I guess, the as basic as it is. Uh, and also think twice or three times before you post something. Amen. And then rewind to 2009. What were you doing then that you don't do now? Um, I wasn't able to articulate why I was... Uh, there? Yeah. And I was on it because I was just on it, because it was just starting. I was also living in London. This was during Love Never Dies. And Twitter was a big... For some reason, it was bigger in London, I feel like. The Broadway community, part of me feels like Little Mermaid would still be running if we had had social media because people love it. Mm -hmm. um, and we could, like, you can, you can navigate that really nicely and put out what you want people to feel and see and experience with you, I guess. But, um, yeah, I was just, it was, it was, I was unclear about what it was, but I didn't realize then at that age, that time, that I needed to be clear about it. Mm -hmm. I, I treat it as a tool, like water or fire, and it's yeah. like, if you're using it for good, great. That's, Otherwise it's dangerous right. in, in mass amounts. Here's another rule that I have for myself. If it's not informing me, or if it isn't bringing me joy, why am I following it? So let me make sure that I say that because it's one thing about me being in control of what I'm saying and putting out there and being responsible for that, but I am also responsible for who I'm following. I don't follow people or things that are going to um, bring me anger or that I'm gonna follow just so that I can be like, I wanna watch them fail or they're so stupid and like I wanna laugh at that along with people. Mm -hmm. That to me is not it. And that is what creates, I think, the most anxiety that people have about this stuff. They're always freaking out about it. And it's like, have you seen so-and-so on social? If you are leading with that, why are you following that person on social? Don't follow it follow that that's another you know we we do start our days with our phones so why am i going to scroll through a feed of things that are bringing me misery but the well that's why i say follow things also that inform you so that you're not also living in an in ignorant ignorance. life like I, there's news things that are inherent you can't avoid the sadness but don't actively seek it out i love it thank Ooh. you those are some truth bombs up in there <laughs> Okay, so let's close. Yep. I'm sure this is a very common question, and I think we all know the answer. But what is your advice to the artist? I'm going to do this straight to camera. Those of you that know this, you can say it with me. And those of you that don't know this, you are about to have it in your head for the rest of your life. You are enough. You are so enough. It's unbelievable how enough you are. And the idea of that is that just as we came onto this planet, just as we arrived, is enough. It's as basic as it is. Everything else that we do or bring into our lives is icing. It's, and so we get to choose how we want to add to our enoughness. So that is my advice to people is just trusting that enoughness and when you feel like you don't start doing these tools things that we've been talking about today for this time go back to those places the most basic thing and figure out where the leak is where you had stopped believing that you were enough and get in there get get curious about the work mm -hmm. um i also just want to say that from you know the idea that we have rejection all the time we have these self-doubts and and things like that is that that's not going anywhere but since you're down there since it's happening to you what can you learn down there that you can then pull up and bring into your life and keep trusting that that you enoughness enough. yeah i love it and so should we pull our word now so that yeah. we can also explain uh what this is all about yeah so these are words that i will uh pull sometimes before uh a show uh if i just need to center myself or um before a meeting or uh even if it, it's like how am i going to go out into the world today let me just see or an audition or anything um and they have positive uh words on them and so i will pull a word 
I'll pull it. one. Yeah, I want please you to do. Pull one. Oh, I get to pull one too? Okay. Yeah. This will be my word for the day. Yep. All right. You first. Okay. Acceptance. I love it. Okay. Mine is light. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this up, people. Okay. So that's that. Um, we're, our words are light and acceptance. Yep. This has been an amazing interview. Thank you so much. For me too. Thank you so much. Girl. Um, where can we go to learn more about you? www.sierrabogus.com. Yes. Oh. You're going to love it. I love it. So now Sierra and I want to hear from you. What is the one way that you will share light or acceptance and how you're going to take on that word? Come on over to TonyHowell.me and leave a comment on this video. While you're there, I have a free gift for you, my big picture brand boot camp that's going to teach you how to design your future. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I want to leave by saying, remember to keep making things, making things better, mm. and making things happen. Thanks, Sierra. Thank you. I have to practice my looking face. <laughs> it's really important to be who you are. <laughs> Don't worry about what you look like. <laughs> face tune, face, 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 face tune. I'm listening to you, Tony. <laughs> Hysterical. <laughs> <laughs>